Hello, and welcome to the Worship Ministry Training Podcast. My name is Alex and Fiege, and I'm so glad you are tuning in today. This podcast is for worship leaders and worship team members who want to improve in your craft and calling. And if you are a new listener, welcome. I want to encourage you to hit the subscribe button, whether you're watching on YouTube or listening to the podcast in your favorite podcast app. Why? Because every single month you will get a helpful, practical, in-depth, topical teaching on worship ministry and how to improve your worship ministry. So go ahead and hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any future episodes. Also, if you're a new listener, check out all the past episodes from the last eight years. I want to encourage you, we've done tons of topics, tons of content, all for free. So check out the content library and just scroll back in time. Uh, hit any episodes that you want to listen to that will help you in this season of your ministry. And if you are someone who is really hungry to grow and you desire to grow as a worship leader, I'm going to point you to the Worship Ministry Training Academy. What is the Academy? It is basically a community filled with everything you need to build a thriving worship ministry. Literally everything. We have 10 in-depth courses on topics like set building, team building, group communication, uh, administrative systems. So we have courses, we have live monthly trainings on topics like wise boundaries in ministry, because all these pastors are failing and falling. Um, so monthly uh, workshops, we have uh, team resource documents, we have team discipleship material for your worship team. So check out the Academy. It is $1 to try for 15 days. You get full access to play around for $1. And then after that, uh, it's just $29 a month, and that's full access to everything. Literally, we have uh, team member training materials for you. We have an onboarding process that's already done for you. We have a an audition process that's already done for you. So it's it's literally like if you need help in your ministry, this is the resource that you need. So uh, go to worshipministrytraining.com to check that out and to start your trial. Uh, and I hope to see you inside of the academy. Part of the Academy is we do uh, live interviews with experts, so different worship leaders that you've probably heard of. Recently, we've had Andy Rozier on from Vertical Worship, and Andy uh, did a Q&A session. And so this month, instead of giving you one podcast episode, I'm going to be giving you three podcast episodes. We're going to be breaking up the questions into single episodes. And in this third episode of the month, one of the Academy members is asking how we should think about testimony songs. Like, you know, should we only sing to God, you Lord, you Lord, or can we sing about God? He is good or he. So how should we balance that? And are there any pros and cons to using you songs versus he songs, songs to God versus songs about God? So let's get into this Q&A topic and I'll talk to you at the end. I feel pulled more towards like true worship music and less like testimony songs. Do yes. you guys have anything to say about that i don't, i think i used to like just pick a song like oh this sounds good it sounds catchy it sounds cool and then once i like really like dissected the lyrics i'm like this is more about us than god yeah. mm -hmm. just play all of andy's songs <laughs> uh, no <laughs> i have let me say this in the shortest way i can i think i think um style and uh, it's called lyric and style are both at the table um but um but in a fist fight lyric always has to win yep um charles wesley said you'll know a church's theology by the songs that they sing and that's like you know that's a that's a huge statement right there that i entirely believe you know i think pastors preach great messages but when parents are sitting in the ER at 2 a.m. with their kids, they're not referring to like the second point in the trials message that was preached eight months ago. They are saying to themselves, um, you give and take away, you give and take away. My heart will choose to say, blessed be your name. You know, they're, they're referring to like a lyric. And um, uh, I've subscribed to a flow that's like let's call it a gray line not a heart no it's not like a this is the only way i'm going to hike up the mountain i think there's many ways to get up the mountain but to achieve the goal at the top of the the mountain which is like sending people back to their car saying god is awesome and not my church is awesome you know um and um 
if you were to break up the top 100 CCLI, for instance, you know, today, you would see that actually probably 70% of the songs in there are testimony songs. Wow. And the reason that is, is not a problem to me because I'm a songwriter and it's really hard to write a song and not pull yourself into the narrative of the song. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. But um, if every hand, if every song is a hand and written on that hand is awesome things about God. Okay. There's a finger pointing on that hand and songs like Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Um, we are here for you. Um, come have your way among us. We welcome you here, Lord Jesus. Um, awesome things about God, but the finger is pointing out to the congregation. Come on, let's go worship God together, right? And uh, my greatest uh, observation, critical observation of where those of how those songs are used is um if you came over to my house for dinner and we you, you know you came in we chatted we sat down you know we had some appetizers we had a great meal then we're halfway through dessert and i jump up and shout welcome um that would seem crazy to anybody and yet we do it in our worship narrative mm -hmm. we'll go like two-thirds of the way through the worship and be like holy spirit you're welcome here as if he's not living an active present god in the room who is like uh i've been here yeah why are you welcoming me two-thirds <laughs> of the way through this like and our response to that is because we like this song and we like where it is in the set. God's like, I don't care what you like. This worship is about me. It's not about your preference. This is about my preference. This is go back to the Bible and read where you exist in the in the order of of I will not share my glory with another, you know, and and so. There's kind of like three big buckets of songs, really, in, in worship. There's, there's the songs that call people to worship. And then on the other end of the spectrum, there's the songs that you're talking about, Monica, which is kind of like the, the like, let's um, ascribe worth completely to God, you know. Um, and there are a lot of, there's a lot of songs about that, but they're, they're kind of hard to come by uh, because worship songwriters pull themselves into the narrative and that's why like 70 percent of probably the songs that are in i'm using like ccli as an example because they cover all the churches across the u.s right so like 70 percent of the songs that are being sung are testimony songs are they bad no they are not because 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 our churches are hospitals they are uh, they are spiritual hospitals for the broken to come in every weekend and it's important that we sing a narrative where we say lord i need you oh i need you every hour i need you people need to re remind and rehearse um themselves into the narrative of um the blood of jesus christ covers me you know, and he is able to take on the weight of my sin and and my shame. And he is able to help me find a way out of this. And that's all about me. So awesome things about God, that finger is pointed here. Where it becomes a massive problem is if we plan our songs to the point that when we arrive at the destination of our worship set, people are standing there and they're basically going, me, 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 mm -hmm. you know, this is about me, this is about me, you know, and that's when, that's when, hey buddy, that's when it becomes like a, um, that's when testimony songs become to where on us a little bit mm -hmm. they start to wear us down because because actually we're kind of like creating a narrative within our churches where 
um, the finger is pointed at us. So mm-hmm. that's why I would subscribe to a flow. And I, like I said at the beginning of this little ramble, um, you know, I think there's a thousand ways up the hill. But I would start with songs that call people worship. I would end with songs that ascribe worth entirely to God. And in the middle, I would sing songs of testimony, you know, where people get to be reminded of the gospel truth within their lives. Yeah, uh, write that down. Uh, start with a call to worship song, two testimony songs, and then a God-centered song as the closer, right? And I think that's that's really helpful. And I, I have, Monica, I'm, I'm not, you probably already took it, but I have a course, set building course, and the, like it shows you how to build a great set. And the, la- the last song should always be a God-centered song. And Andy, I think you're talking about two categories of song. It's like ascription songs, all God, and then me songs, what God has done for me. Then there's a whole other category that maybe Monica's referencing, which is uh, he songs. So not songs, you God, but he. So come all you weary, come all you thirsty, come to the well that never runs dry. Drink of his goodness. God so loved the world for God so loved the world that he gave. It's like you never are talking to God or yeah. oh, come to the altar. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's it's like we do this, but we're not t- talking to him directly. And that's a whole yeah. other category. Is that kind of also what you're talking about, Monica? I try to avoid those songs. Oh, come to the altar. Of course, you got to use it when it's altar call. But <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. That is that's very helpful. I 100% agree with that. Like it's kind of like the God. If God's in the room, He's like, "Are you going to sing to me, or are you going to sing about me?" You know, <laughs> but not to kind of like throw the, you know, throw it all out. Which I know you're not doing anyway. But like, you just said said with "Oh, come to the altar." Just kind of like, yeah, but there's like an altar call, and that's a great song to sing it. Like a lot of those songs sometimes that sing about God, if they're placed in the right way, you know, can have like some significant impact because they're beautiful songs and they they say some amazing things about God. Yes. Um, But yes, in general, I think the principle is um, Psalm 96 all the gods of the peoples are worthless idols, but the Lord made the heavens. Splendor and majesty are before him, strength and beauty are in his sanctuary. Ascribe to the Lord, O families of the peoples. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. Bring an offering and come into his courts. Four lines from Psalm 96 that basically bullseye verses about the worship service, and the word is to. Mm-hmm. Not ascribe about the Lord or ascribe mm-hmm. for the Lord, but ascribe to the Lord. He's present in the room, therefore sing to him. Uh, there's a story I heard once about just that the, the best example of that is kind of like we're all sitting at a table in a restaurant talking about God, talking about God. And then God sits down at the table and we keep talking about God for the rest of the conversation and he's like yeah. he's like are you gonna well, i just sat down with you guys yeah like are you gonna are you gonna talk to me or are you gonna just keep talking about me that's so good all right well hopefully this episode was helpful to you and again i want to encourage you if you are serious about growing in your craft or if you just need help to strengthen your worship ministry check out the academy it is designed to give you everything you need to build a thriving worship ministry look you're busy you need to focus on leading your team and let us focus on helping you do that well we'll give you all the tools and everything you need to lead your team well. You focus on them, we'll equip you, and everybody wins. So check out worshipministrytraining.com to sign up for the academy today. Hope to see you on the inside. God bless.